What's up traders? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you guys another weekly technical talk video. Today is Friday, December 14th, coming to the end of another trading week. Only a couple trading weeks here left in the 2018 year. Uh, a lot going on around the world still. We have a huge central bank meeting week next week going on. A lot of central banks around the world are meeting. Um, we've got continued risk on um, as we've got sell-offs going on across the U.S. equities again today. SP 500 is flirting with a very, very strong support. So we just got a lot going on. Uh, anybody new to these videos, I do these videos every week. I release them for you guys, breaking down the Forex markets, touch a little bit of gold, oil, S&P 500 equity markets, but mainly go over the Forex markets, dive into all the each individual currency's index, how they're performing overall. I go over the U.S. major crosses, all the pairs pinned up against the U.S. dollar, as well as my watch list for the week ahead, what I'll be watching for, go over a little bit of trades I took this past week, and all in all, just a full-on dive into the Forex markets, what you need to know, what you need to watch out for this coming week, and just a breakdown on, uh, you know, technical analysis, what's going on in the charts. All my returning viewers, I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. As always, couldn't couldn't thank you guys enough for the support. I really hope you guys still enjoy these videos. I get a lot of great feedback from them. So uh, people must be enjoying them. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into the video here, guys, and dive into what's going on here. If you guys haven't seen it yet, check out the video I just made um, going over when not to trade as we're coming into the end of the year here. We're approaching very, very uh, illiquid and not very good market conditions. To close the end of the year, there's a lot you should be doing at the end of the year anyways to get prepared for the new year to analyze your trading, all that stuff. So um, take a check out the video, um, see it on my page, the last video I uploaded, and check out what I have going on in there so that you're prepared for the end of the year and don't make any mistakes losing money when you shouldn't be trading. All right, guys, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts now, and I'll see you in there. All right, guys, so starting off here with the relative performance of the week. As you guys can see, we have all the major pairs that we trade here, um, the 7 plus the U.S. dollar. This shows us the overall performance of the pairs, starting with strongest to the left, weakest to the right. As you guys can see, U.S. dollar was the top performer of the week. British pound, the worst performer. But you can see generally the U.S. dollar outperformed everything. Um, and we had the pound, Swiss franc, euro as the bottom three performers. CAD, Aussie dollar as the top three performers. Why we use this? We are trend traders and we like to follow the momentum and the trend. And when we have pairs that are underperforming or overperforming, typically they will continue to overperform or underperform rather than reversing. So uh, we like to use this to build into our analysis. That just gives us an idea of how they're performed this past week. Starting over here with the indexes, as you guys can see, we have the US dollar in this uptrend still continuing to move higher. Um, we were in this pennant pattern, this bullish pennant pattern. This is a trend continuation pattern. Price has broken out pull back to retest and is now continuing to break out. So what we want to see is if price is able to break this high, which would give us a new higher high, which would be a very bullish sign to us here with the US dollar. It is a very hard currency to predict far into the future. A lot of moving parts, a lot of different components can influence the value and the price of the dollar. But all in all, technical analysis is the strongest tool we have. And we want to keep an eye on this resistance level holding or breaking here. Takes us to the euro, we have an inverse looking chart. As you guys can see, this uh, bottom portion of this pennant pattern here has been broken, right? With this daily close uh, open up here. Zooming in a little bit, you guys can see this better, right? So Thursday to Friday gap down here. Price is moving up now. Maybe we'll come up to retest this zone, but all in all, we're out of that bearish trend continuation pennant pattern and now moving lower. This is something that, um, you know, bear market continuations C, and that's what we'll be looking for with this pair as we look to pin weak euro up against some trades coming into the next week. Japanese yen is still on this strong weekly support and respecting the bottom trend line of this wedge pattern, pennant pattern. Um, similar pattern that we just saw in the euro dollar, just this is a lot bigger version of it, right? So um, we've been ranging within this pennant for a very long time. And as you can see, the bottom has been touched one, two, three. Now we're making a fourth time and we are condensing price more and more and more con continuously. Um, so what we want to be doing is looking for the breakout to the upside or the downside. Um, either way, I would be leaning a little more towards the downside just because of the trending direction of the yen to the downside. But um, essentially, it could break out either way. And either way would give us most likely a strong move. That brings us over to the British pound, which as you guys can see this week has traded below this very strong weekly support at $1.23. That price has been trading above for a long time. As you guys can see, looking left, 
We haven't been down at this level since April of 2017, right? So all the rest of 2017, all of 2018, until now, we've been trading above that. Very, very strong support that we broke. Pull back to retest as resistance, and now we're selling off again. I remain bearish on the pound, especially with all the volatility around Brexit, potential of uh, Theresa May losing leadership, of Brexit deal collapsing and there being a no deal, all kinds of stuff going on with the pound. So it is a very unstable currency. I wouldn't recommend trading it in general right now. However, I have been in and out on ideal setups. And um, if I was to say anywhere as it would be going, I would say south to the downside. Canadian dollar, basically just range bound all week. Uh, oil has been as well. They're pretty correlated to each other. We had what looked like it could have been an outside reversal. Price broke lower, reversed back up, but has now come back down and is still trading below this support now. So really, until price makes any kind of moves um, outside of this range here, we don't really have any clear idea or direction where this pair is going. We're in a downtrend. We're on support. We're moving lower, 20 below, 50 below, 200, setting lower lows, lower highs. Downtrend, definitely, we definitely are leaning more towards the short side. However, we'd like to see this range break out either way to give us an idea when it's ready to go. Swiss franc um, broke below this strong weekly support, pulled back up to retest it. We thought it was going to go short. However, it broke up above it this week, but now we're breaking back below it again. So um, this is a pretty significant zone and price is really just bouncing around above and below it. So it's not really respecting it too much right now. It's kind of blowing it off, but we did break this counter trend line as well. We broke above the 50 SMA temporarily, but now we're back below it. So really just some ugly price action right now. I'd like to see some more confirmation, some stronger push one way or the other before I have any clear direction set for the Swiss franc. Australian dollar, on the other hand, uh, had reverse trend, set a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, retested the higher high, pull back to retest the higher low. But today we broke below it. We broke below the higher low. We broke below the 50 SMA. We had Chinese data missed last night, Thursday night. Um, Retail sales and industrial production sent the risk on going off into the markets. Uh, risk off, I'm sorry, going on in the markets. Um, you know, people are not risking money. They're pulling their money out of riskier things and going into safe haven assets uh, like the Japanese yen, Swiss franc, and they're taking them out of the higher risk assets like the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. So the Aussie has gotten crushed because of that. We are also now below the 50 SMA and this strong support turn resistance. So I do think a rollover is the next thing we're going to see out of this Aussie dollar. So we want to keep an eye on that. But I think this trend is coming back to the downside. Now, this was a uh, temporary trend reversal, but now we're moving back to the downside. That brings us over to the New Zealand dollar, which has been selling off this week as well. Um, we are now pulled back to this 618, very strong support resistance zone. Um, we could potentially see this move back to the upside. It really depends on a lot of things, risk on, risk off, how the market's doing and all that. But, um, you know, we have been reversing this trend. We are now in an uptrend, just like the Australian dollar. Um, however, this is a little bit in better shape for the trend continuing than Aussie. If this support here, this prior higher low gets broken and price moves below it, then we will consider this trend to be invalid and broken out as well, just like with the Aussie dollar. Until then, we will wait and see if this trend will continue or if it is going to fall back to the downside. All right, so that takes us now over to the S&P 500, the U.S. equity market index, top 500 gross U.S. equities, stocks, public traded companies. Um, as you guys can see, we've been range bound here pretty strong all through October, November, and now into December. We are coming up to this very strong support at this 2600 level. As you guys can see, looking left, it has been very significant support, and it has been one, two, three times here as well. We are now testing it again. Earlier in the week, price tried to push lower and then closed higher on the day. Um, very significant uh, bearish rejection, lower wick candle we saw there. However, price looks like it's shrugging it off and looks like it might be continuing to the downside too. If we see a break of this level and a break and close, not a rejection, uh, I think we could see a very strong sell-off. I think we could see a lot of fear coming into the markets. There's a lot of talks about recession in the U.S. economy, a lot of talks about the markets turning over. The more that becomes a discussion, the more people start to believe it, the more people start to act on it, and the more we will create a self-fulfilling recession. So um, we have to be careful what's going on in the economy. I don't think we're recession ready yet. I think um, we still have another year or two left in this bull market. But we'll have to keep an eye and see. This technical breakout would be very significant. We have the death cross, 50 cross below the 200 daily moving average. 
All moving averages are sloped downward. Price is trading below all of them. They're in the proper order. Technically speaking, we are in a downtrend right now on this S&P 500. However, this strong support is what's holding everything up, and we'll wait and see if we get a bounce, and this continues to the upside, or if price is going to sell off, break below this, and fall off from here. Um, gold, this has been uh, not as you know, volatile as the S&P and the stock markets, but it still has been pretty volatile. And it, it has been moving slowly higher um, as the S&P 500 has been moving lower. They are inversely related. The gold's a safe haven asset. S&P 500 is you know, a risk on asset. So uh, we want to keep an eye on gold. Gold isn't really doing anything too significant right now. A little bit of a pullback within a uh, earlier formation of an uptrend here. So we'll keep an eye on this to see if it does anything. And oil basically just remained in a basing pattern all week as with last week. So we have had a lot of consolidation here out of oil. Um, that shows us that you know price is building after this massive sell-off. People took profits. People stepped back. People allocated their money or they're just holding to see what happens. And it hasn't been as much of a headliner. Um, hasn't been as big of a deal lately because it's been range-bound and you know made such a drastic move. Price is catching its breath like usual. Um, but we can expect to see this continue again. When we see a breakout of this pattern, whether to the downside or if it's going to reverse, I would like to see a break of this range before we really start looking for any kind of momentum moves out of the U.S. oil price here. This takes us over to the U.S. majors. Starting with the euro dollar, as you guys can see here, we're starting to break out of this pennant pattern, bearish pennant pattern, trend continuation pattern. 50 SMA has been holding as resistance along with the top of this pennant pattern. We've got very strong weekly support here. That price is flirting with as well as the bottom trend line to this pendant pattern. So we're going to have to wait and see. Price is still ranging between this lower high here and this lower low here. That's what's forming this pendant. But it looks like we're going to get a break and close outside of this pendant pattern. So uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on short euro for the coming weeks and see what we're able to make out of that. Pound dollar, US dollar. I called this out on my Instagram account. Price set a lower low, broke this very strong weekly support. Pushed to the downside, recovered for a couple days, retested this resistance. I was saying to watch for a break, a push of that initially when we tested it, and price has sold off from there. Uh, it's pulling back a little bit off this sell-off, but I am still bearish pound dollar, and I will only be looking for moves to the downside. This takes us over to the dollar CAD, and similar to oil, it has just been basing, right, up at this strong resistance, just been basing sideways, waiting for some momentum either way. Um to see which way this price is head, this pair is heading, but I do think we're still going to continue the upside. Might might get a little bit more of a sell off, pull back a little bit more of a correction before continuing. But we are in an uptrend. 250, 20 proper movement average placement, making higher highs, higher lows, trading above the moving averages. So strong technical bias to the upside. Dollar yen. Um, this one's another one that's basically forming a wedge as well. Just looking at these highs um, closing in, the lows closing in. So a little bit of a basing pattern here as well. We have this trend line here preventing price from going higher, as you can see with this sell-off here. Um, but we have been in a range-bound market with this pair all through here. right? So we set a higher high, pull back for a higher low, and it's just been rain-bound between that since. So um, nothing really great on the radar in the coming week or so for the dollar yen. Um, I'm going to wait for more price action showing us where it's headed before we look for any trades there. Dollar Swiss franc. Still slowly continuing to roll over, uh, set a lower low, lower high, lower low, now setting a lower high, testing the 50 SMA in here. Um, we'll see if price rejects that and continues to the downside. That's looking like it's more so possibility than to the upside right now with this, um, but we'll have to keep an eye on that pair as well. Aussie dollar here, as you guys can see, strong sell off last week, continued to sell off, rallied a little bit, sold off again, uh, breaking the 50 SMA right now, break broke already this higher low to set a new lower low, uh, rolling over the trend, continuing this strong lower downtrend we had here. We started to reverse the trend. We were in an uptrend, hit this strong weekly level, and sold off pretty drastically. So looks like we're going to be continuing back to the downside here on Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, um, reversing trend as well, but we are still well above the 50 SMA. Um, we did initially break what looked like could have been structure here, but we are still respecting the trend. I had a short, we were in here at Core FX, but we did get stopped out this week on this trade. As you guys can see, price pulled back to retest this strong resistance turn support on the weekly. Look like with this strong four hour break above this level here and on the hourly here, look like price was going to go 
and moved to the upside, but it actually reversed and came and stopped this out. So we got trapped in that lost part of the game, normal. But now we are selling off pretty hard again. Um, I would look for this to be the last line of defense for this uptrend before we start looking to the downside with this pair as well. But so far, we are still moving higher. CAD yen, this is a trade we're in here. Um, short, we just got triggered in today. Sh making lower lows, lower highs. Pull back to retest this on Fibonacci retracement level on this strong support turn resistance on the 200-day SMA. Um, now we're getting a bearish engulfing close. On the 4-hour, you can see this pullback up to the strong zone. And on the hourly, you can see the counter trend line that was broken. And we entered right in here when price started to break lower. Still moving sideways. We'll hold partial position over the weekend. If we don't see a push to the downside, we'll just close at break even and hold partial over the weekend. I don't like holding trades over the weekend, but I do have a very strong feeling about the risk sentiment to the downside and that Japanese yen gaining strength. So I'll probably hold a portion of this over the weekend. Pound yen. Um, Setting lower lows, lower high, bearish engulfing closing here. I think this pair is likely to continue to the downside as well. Pound Swiss franc, similar story, setting lower lows, lower highs, moved to the downside, rallied from there, and we're now um, finding a little bit of minor resistance here at this uh, $1.26 level. And price was starting to sell off today, but it's pulling back now. But all in all, I do think we are uh, expecting this to continue to the downside, just waiting to find that right area of pullback where it finds that resistance. Pound New Zealand, this was a trade I took earlier in the week that was a full take profit win. Um, similar story. As you guys know, we're in a downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, set a lower low, pulled back to just about retest the prior lower high, 20 SMA, and then sold off to the downside off some uh, weak bearish pound news out of Great Britain on Brexit and uh, hit our full take profit and then reversed up. But now we're hitting this 20 SMA again and we're rejecting. So this could be another opportunity to look for shorts. Euro pound had a strong breakout this week to the upside. We've now had back to back bearish days of pullback. Today we have a little bit of an indecision candle, doji candle. I would have liked to pull back to come a little bit further, but uh, we'll wait and see if price is able to break and close below this 89, um, 80 support level here. Looks like price is initially bouncing off it right now. But we are looking for longs on this pair, just right for, for waiting for the right opportunity. Euro New Zealand, this is another trade we took this week. Um, did work out to our take profit one as we rejected this resistance. Broke the trend line, rode it short to take profit one, but then it pulled back and stopped the rest of our position out at break even there. Um, on the daily, you can see a similar story with lower lows, lower highs. Price pulled back. I do like this trade specifically because of this level we are now pulling back to and rejecting again with this strong upper wick pin bar candle here. As you can see, looking left, this is a very nice zone. It has been resistance. It has been support. There's been strong moves away. It's taken strong candles to break it. It is now support, strong break, retest that resistance, looking for another move to the downside. In a downtrend, everything's showing us downside. Um, this rejection, bearish rejection candle here on this daily time frame is going to be a good indicator for us to look for short opportunities here in the coming week or so with this Euro New Zealand. Euro CAD, we are in an uptrend on this pair. And as you can see with this zone, um, I'll take this guy and put it over there. As you can see with this zone right here, um, we had resistance, now support, Strong higher high, rejected off 200 SMA, pulled back, now acting as support here. Look for that next push to the upside, potentially breaking through that 200 SMA and moving back higher. Aussie New Zealand, another pair I'm watching here that I really like, set a strong lower low, has now retraced. If we throw our friend Mr. Fibonacci out here on it, we can see from the prior move to the bottom of it. We are at the 618 to 50 level here. 50 ultimately is rejecting this candle. We're getting an upper pin bar here. Like to see this close as a shooting star candle, retesting prior structure, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, retesting prior lower low, support now resistance. This is a very nice uh, opportunity for us here. We had a bullish week all week, but this is an opportunity for us to now short this pair off this 20 SMA and potentially ride it to the downside. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, higher highs, higher lows. Higher highs, double topped and sold off off of this strong resistance. But now we can look for it to find support. Again, prior structure becoming prior structure. Resistance turn support, higher high, now higher low. That is what we'd like to see and try to catch the next push to the upside. CAD Swiss Franc is one of my favorite pairs um, coming into this week. 
We were in a bear pennant, a bullish pennant pattern, broke out to the downside, broke through all the moving averages, set a lower low, pull back to set a lower high, set another lower low. We're now pulling back to set a lower high. Again, we can see there's possibly a Fibonacci level in here. As you can see, there is. We're right around the 50 level um, in this strong area. So I'm looking for shorting opportunities all in this gray box. I will be looking for opportunities for this pair to continue this downtrend and pull back this, uh, end this pullback and this correction here. All right, so that does it with my watch list for the week, as well as the U.S. dollar crosses. Now moving over to the um, fundamentals. As you guys can see, we had a pretty good week here this week as far as events go. We had a decent amount of um, news events. Ending today, Friday, with retail sales out of the U.S., we had weak numbers in the euro. Caused some weakness in the euro here on Friday, PMI numbers across the board. Here's the weak Chinese data that we saw. Um, and then, you know, we had U.S. CPI. Um, right on par with expectations, PPI a little bit better, and you know, some random um, other news events here throughout the week. But this upcoming week, we have a pretty jacked up trading week. So this is typically where I tell everybody it's the end of the year. It's the second half of December. You don't want to be trading. You want to take your profits. You want to minimize your losses. You want to go and reflect on your year. Go and prepare for the new year. Do whatever it is you got to do to stay away from the charts and prepare and better yourself. New goals, check which goals you did make, you didn't make, all this stuff. But, um, uh, and essentially, not trade for the rest of the year. This coming week is a little bit of a toss up to that potentially being not the case because we have a lot of fundamental news to drive volatility. Typically, there is a massive lack of volatility in the Forex markets at the end of the year here. Uh, but this week, we are pretty loaded with news. This is usually the last good, decent week of trading in the FX markets, and I for sure will not be trading any time past this week. Friday the 21st is the last trading day of the year for me, if I even trade up till Friday. Um, so that being said, pay attention to the news this upcoming week. Slow start to the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I wouldn't be trading much, not much going on. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, red right across the board, right? We've got CPI numbers out of pound, CAD, We've got U.S. FOMC meeting. We've got GDP out of New Zealand. Unemployment out of Australia. Um, central bank meeting out of Japan. Retail sales out of the pound. Central bank meeting out of the pound. Um, GDP out of the pound. CAD retail sales. CAD GDP. Um, U.S. final GDP. U.S. durable goods. Bank of Canada business outlook survey. We are loaded this week, guys. I need you to be careful. You guys have to be very careful with all these events. But at the same time, we could see some very good opportunities. You just have to know what pairs to be in at what times and what pairs not to be in at what time. You don't want to be holding a pound pair at uh, the opening of a CPI announcement when you don't have your stops in place or you don't have your risk management adjusted or um, you, know, you don't have your risk off the table. You want to be prepared. You want to be ready. You want to know what's going on. And this week is one of those weeks where if you don't, you can get beat up badly in these markets. So... Just pay attention to what's going on in the news. Heavily, heavily news-weighted week this week. Um, this is my last trading week. Then I'll be done for the year. But um, I'll still be you know, checking the charts. I will be reflecting on my year, preparing for my new year, breaking down my uh, trades, preparing my new journal, all this stuff. So just make sure you guys are on board. Make sure you guys are aware of this. You're not over-trading. You're not looking for setups in times you shouldn't be. You're enjoying the times with your friends and family over the holidays and really just taking a step back. All right, guys, again, love you all. Appreciate it. Happy holidays to everybody. I hope everybody that celebrates any holiday out there is enjoying their time. Um, and I hope you guys are having a great trading week. And we will have another great trading week coming up this week. All right, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one.